grace and peace to you. Good morning and welcome to worship here at Hickory Hills Presbyterian Church. We are thankful that you are with us this morning, whether you are in person or online. A couple of announcements. The first is that following worship, there is actual real live fellowship time downstairs with coffee. There are snacks, and we would really love for you to stick around after that until about 1 o'clock. Between 11.30 and 1, we're going to have some conversations about our life together, about where we hope and desire to go, where we believe that God is calling the church. Some of those kinds of conversations are happening. And what I need to say, and I cannot say strongly enough, you do not need to be a member to be a part of this conversation. What we want is people who are showing up and engaged to be a part of this conversation. And so if you are not yet a member or if you have no interest in becoming a member, we still want you to be a part of the conversation because you are here regularly engaging in our life together. Okay? So following worship, fellowship, snacks included, in coffee included, and then we'll have some conversation together about where God might be calling us and where we are. Bernie is on vacation this week, and I need to ask for prayers for our friend and secretary, Bernie. Bernie was in the hospital this week with some uh, discomfort in her chest and some headache, and she is completely fine. The doctor thinks that it's stress-related which is not because of us. Um, <laughs> let's be clear, it's not the church. There's some other stuff going on. But she's home. She is resting. But I have told her, even though she's not going to be necessarily traveling for vacation this coming week, she is absolutely not allowed to come to work. She needs to rest. So if you have announcements or anything that needs to be put in the bulletin, if you have uh, prayer requests, any of those kinds of things, I need them by Wednesday because I'm the one doing your bulletin this week. All right? Um, beyond that, just a reminder for those of you on the Rev Committee, you have a meeting on Wednesday at 7 p.m. if you are available. Beyond that, are there any announcements that I have missed? Is there anything else that needs to be said? Then let's prepare our hearts and worship together. On this day, we gather as God's people, created by water and the Spirit, joining with creation in praising God's glory. Who makes us new. Eternal One, you have called us to be members of one body. Join us with those who in all times and places have praised your name, that with one heart and mind, we may show the unity of your church and bring honor to our Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ. Amen. Our hymn of praise this morning is number 401, here in this place.
know that nothing is able to separate us from the love of God in Christ Jesus. In freedom, then, let us confess the wrong we have done and seek to, to turn again towards the one who offers us forgiveness and new life. Please join me in our prayer of confession. Almighty God, we confess how hard it is to be your people. You have called us to be the church, to continue the mission of Jesus Christ in our lonely and confused world. Yet we acknowledge we have often more apathetic than active, isolated than involved, callous than compassionate, obstinate than obedient, legalistic than loving. Gracious Lord, have mercy upon us and forgive our sins. Remove the obstacles preventing us from being your representatives to a broken world. Awaken our hearts to the promised gift of your indwelling spirit. This we pray in Jesus' powerful name. Amen. Hear the good news. This saying is sure and worthy of full acceptance that Christ Jesus came into the world to have sinners. He, he himself bore our sins in his body on the cross, on the cross that, that we might be dead to sin and alive to all that is good. I declare to you in the name of Jesus Christ, you are forgiven. Thanks, Thanks be, be to God. God. Our New Testament this reading this morning comes from Acts 13, verses 2 through 5. While they were worshiping the Lord and fasting, the Holy Spirit said, Set apart for me Barnabas and Saul for the work to which I have called them. Then, after fasting and praying, they laid their hands on them and sent them off. So, being sent out by the Holy Spirit, they went down to Seleucia, and from there they sailed to Cyprus. When they arrived at Salamis, they proclaimed the, world, the word of God in the synagogues of the Jews, and they had John also, excuse me, also to assist them. This is the word of the Lord. Breathe. 
What I love about that is that I know that that is just Gabby, and there is almost no way to imagine that that is just one voice. And so the technology is amazing, and the gift of music is such fun. Our gospel this morning comes from Luke chapter 10, and we're going to read one section, and then we're going to skip over to the rest of the story. So hear the word of God. After this, the Lord appointed 70 others and sent them on ahead of him in pairs to every town and place where he himself intended to go. He said to them, the harvest is plentiful, but the laborers are few. Therefore, ask the Lord of the harvest to send out laborers into his harvest. Go on your way. See, I am sending you out like lambs into the midst of wolves. Carry no purse, no bag, no sandals, and greet no one on the road. Whatever house you enter, first say, peace to this house. And if anyone is there who shares in peace, your peace will rest on that person. But if not, it will return to you. Remain in the same house eating and drinking whatever they provide, for the laborer deserves to be paid. Do not move about from house to house. Whenever you enter a town and its people welcome you, eat what is set before you. Cure the sick who are there and say to them, the kingdom of God has come near. But whenever you enter a town and they do not welcome you, go out into its streets and say, even the dust of your town that clings to our feet, we wipe off in protest against you. Yet, know this, the kingdom of God has come near. And then we come to verse 17. The 70 returned with joy, saying, Lord, in your name, even the demons submitted to us. Jesus said to them, I watched Satan fall from heaven like a flash of lightning. See, I have given you authority to tread on snakes and scorpions and over all the power of the enemy, and nothing will hurt you. Nevertheless, do not rejoice at this, but that the Spirit submitted to you, but rejoice that your names are written in heaven. This is the word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. We have been, over the past five Sundays, wondering together what it means to join Christ's mission in this world. What does it mean to be on mission with Jesus? And we come then to the last of the pieces that I want to add to our puzzle, and next Sunday we'll talk about the puzzle as a whole. 
But today is all about community. The mission of Jesus is always done in community. It is always done in partnership with others. We don't get sent out alone. We are not silos. We are not lone rangers. And we are not isolated. We know how connected we are to each other. And if we read scripture, we begin to see that part of God's mission for the followers of Jesus is that they always go in community and they always join others who are in community. Some of this is intuitive, right? Some of this we just know. We know that we're safer in pairs. There is a reason why Caleb at camp this past week was not allowed to go anywhere without a partner. Even at 14, the buddy system is a thing. When you send children out into the woods, they ought to go with another person, not by themselves or in a group. When we send grown-ups out into the world, we are better when we go together than when we go by ourselves. If you travel to a different place and you are on your own, you are more vulnerable. If you take someone with you, even a friend who's likely to get just as lost as you are, at least you're lost together, right? We see this in the ways in which Jesus' followers intentionally went out into the world. We see this in Jesus' command to his disciples. We first see Jesus sending the 12 out, go out in pairs. And then he does it again with the 70. Some of this is about Jesus sending people out to get ready for when he's not with them anymore. Some of this is about on-the-job training. This is about followers of Jesus learning to live and act as followers of Jesus when Jesus is no longer with them. And so he says, go. Go out. Here's what you need to do. Preach and teach and heal in my name. And then he gives really specific instructions for how they should go. So there's two pieces of community, aren't there? First, there's the reality that nobody goes alone. Jesus sends his followers in pairs. We don't go by ourselves to do mission work. Our missionaries learned this years ago, back a long time ago when we didn't do missions well, back when we were seeking to export not just our faith but our culture into the world, we often sent missionaries out alone. Now we never do that. We always go in groups. We always go in pairs. When we send people on mission trips, we go what? In groups or in partnership with others. We know that in order to join Christ's mission, we need people to go with us who will work with us. And then Jesus teaches his followers something else. He gives all of these instructions about how they are supposed to go. Not only do you not go alone, not only do you need the buddy system, but Jesus also says that when you go, go into community. Go to a household. And when you are welcomed there, Jesus says, stay there. Don't jump from house to house to house to house. Stay put and build community where you are in the community in which you have joined. Don't jump around. Accept the hospitality that is offered to you. Don't go looking for a better offer is some of what Jesus is saying. But also Jesus is saying that people need community. We see it again if you read the book of Acts. Paul, in all of his missionary journeys, in all of the work that he did, he never went by himself. We often say Paul, right? But it was always Paul and Barnabas and Silas and John and Timothy and Priscilla and Aquila, always with someone else. 
never by himself, always in community. And we know from the stories in Acts that Paul and his partners never went and stood on the street corner and tried to grab single individuals. They never started there. They always started in the communities that were gathered to worship God. We're told in this passage that they went and preached and taught in the synagogues. When they arrived in a city that didn't have a synagogue, they looked for places where people were already worshiping God. They met Lydia and her community by a river. They looked for places where God's people were already gathered and then built community in those places. What this reminds us of is that we need each other. The church is not a building. We've been saying that for over a year. And yet we also know, having done worship in our homes in isolation by ourselves, that there is no replacement for community. Sometimes we have to find that community in creative ways. And Zoom, while inadequate and not the same as being together, is at least a space where community can be built. We need one another. We need partners. We need people to hold us accountable, to push us and challenge us. And gathering together in creative ways, in different ways, whether it's in a building like this or outside or wherever, the community matters, doesn't it? We learn from Jesus that we don't go alone. We need each other. There's a reason why the community of faith is created. There's a reason why Jesus compares us to the body of Christ, because all of the different members make up a body. Part of God's design for us as followers of Jesus is to do it in community. We need one another and to not go alone. So I want you to imagine with me experiences that you've had of when it has been better to go in partnership than to go alone. When we are sent to work with people rather than on our own. Times and spaces where you have worked to turn strangers into neighbors so that you can partner together. So many of you have the experience of having gone on mission trips. Now, there's a couple of things about that that I want to say. When I've gone on mission trips, number one, I've never gone by myself. I've always gone in a group. Number two, I never went with a group that decided what we were going to do for people, but rather when we arrived, a group of people who were already there said, this is the work we need you to do while you are here. And then the other thing about that is I don't know about your experience, but every mission trip I've ever gone on, I have learned more and been more impacted by the work that I've done than the people that I thought I was going to serve. It has meant more to me than it ever did for them. And that requires humility to acknowledge, doesn't it? The other thing that we learn about Jesus and the way that he creates this thing called the church or the body of Christ or the communion of the saints or the group of believers is that he keeps calling us into community, but he also keeps giving us people that are going to walk with us. So who are the people that you have gone to think that you're going to serve somewhere and you were met by someone who was going to teach you? So I want to tell you today about my friend Ruby. When I was a newly ordained minister of word and sacrament, just out of seminary and had absolutely no idea what I was doing, right? Because everything they taught me in seminary has nothing to do with what you actually do in ministry. And if you thought that you knew what you were doing, let me tell you, I skipped the class on pandemic. And I skipped the class on how in the world to learn how to do church different than the way I had ever done it before. 
I missed all of that in seminary. They didn't give me that class, or I skipped class that day. When I arrived at Church of the Good News, I was told that there was a woman in the community that I had to know, and that she would be my person. I didn't know what that meant, but one day, Ruby showed up in my office. Ruby had been a member of the community for years and years. She knew everyone. I mean, everyone. And she was mom or auntie or cousin or sister to everyone. And so one day, Ruby took me walking through Lathrop Holmes. Lathrop Holmes is a um, subsidized housing, one of the ones that was torn down by Chicago a few years back. But she took me walking through Lathrop, through a community that a white 25-year-old middle-class pastor was never going to be welcomed into. I would have been seen as suspicious. I would have been seen as other, a threat, dangerous, somebody strange. But with Ruby, I met everybody. With Ruby, I was introduced to all of the movers and the shakers and everybody who was anybody and all of the nobodies. With Ruby, as my ambassador, I was the pastor of good news and somebody you needed to know. With Ruby as a partner, I belonged in a community where I would not have belonged if I had shown up and said, here I am, how can I help you? We need ambassadors. We need connectors. We need people in our lives who help us meet up with and connect with one another. We need to not do ministry and mission alone. And so I wonder who our connectors are already. Who are the people that have walked with you and partnered with you? Who are the people who have been your guides and helped you to encounter the community in new ways? Who is already active that we can learn from? Who else has God planted in our community? who is doing the work that we know needs to be done, that we can join. You see, Jesus didn't just send his followers out. He sent them out using the buddy system so that nobody got lost, so that nobody got stuck somewhere and didn't know how to get out, so that there was safety in the connection. And then he sent them to communities. Jesus didn't send his followers to say, here, bring me to them. Rather, Jesus said, here, go to these communities and be the kind of person I have called to you to be in that community. And what happens when his followers go out? They come back with stories. They come back with stories of the things that Christ is doing in the world. They come back with stories of healing. They come back with stories of cleansing, of new life, of new opportunity, and they are on fire and excited. So what are the stories that we're not telling? What are the opportunities that we haven't seen? Who are the partners that we need to keep connecting with? Jesus modeled this way of doing life. And the people who came after, who started the early church, did the same. They went in groups. They connected with people who were already doing God's work in the world. And they continued to share and spread the message exponentially. Where do we already have people who have something to teach us? Who are your guides? Where have you been that you need to tell us about? Where is God calling us to go? These are the conversations that we need to have with each other. These are the conversations that you are invited into. Sometimes they feel really big and overwhelming, don't they? Where is the church going in the next five years? That's a really big question, isn't it? and kind of scary. If we narrow it down and ask a smaller question, 
Where is God already at work? Where do we see evidence of God operating, moving, changing, calling, shifting our world? And how can we be a part of it? That's the questions that we need to begin to talk about. This isn't about me having a grand plan for the future of the church and handing it to you. It doesn't work that way. The Spirit moves in us and among us together as community. And together we wonder, where is God calling us to be? Where is God already active and moving among us? And how do we do a better job of joining God on that mission? Amen. People of God, are there joys or concerns that you have to share with one another today? Dave. It's a hard choice to acknowledge that disability is the best path. And so prayers for Bob as he continues to walk this journey of life. Tom.
All right, so continued prayers for Sharon. We rejoice that surgery went well, but we know that that's just one piece of a long road. So please keep praying for Sharon and thank you for your love. And then also for the vocal family, um, Jerry passed away um, from complications for diabetes and is a friend of Tom's. So please be in prayer for that family. Other things, Arlene. So Arlene's neighbor, Karen, had her hip replaced, and so prayers for ongoing healing and recovery for her. Start. Okay, Gert takes the driver's test this week. Prayers for her. Other things. Certainly the accident here in town yesterday. I have two requests online. Um, first is from the CMEDES for Mark, who is a cousin and has been diagnosed with a rare form of cancer. And Jenny is asking that we continue to pray for Maureen, who is also battling cancer and is so weak they can't run the test to figure out what kind. Um, keep Bernie in your prayers as she uh, recovers from just a lot of stress in life. And then uh, Molly has asked that we continue to keep praying for the children, for Dolly and Nafe and Yanko. Um, they're still waiting for things to move on the custody, and there are some complications in the middle of that that are too much to go into, but if you want to know, I'm happy to conversate with you and let you know what's going on. But just prayers for the family that is with the children and caring for them, but in particular for the children and for the process. Are there other things? All right then. People of God, let us bring all of this before our God in prayer. Gracious Heavenly Father, we come to you today as your people, gathered in a particular place at a particular time. We come carrying our own needs and our concerns and our awareness of a wider world, full also of needs and concerns. God, we confess that we are in awe, that you notice us that you care for the hairs upon our head when it seems like there is so much out there that is just so heavy. And so we pray today. We pray today for the needs of this community, the people that we love, and we pray for this wider world. And so today we pray for Bernie and for Bob and for Sharon, and for Gert, and Karen, and Maureen, and Mark. We pray for the vocal family. We pray for Dolly, and Nafe, and Yanko, for the family that continues to care for them, for the court hearings that are waiting for Molly and the rest of the netters as they anticipate and hope. Lord God, we pray for those who have been impacted by accidents and disasters, who are grieving the losses of loved ones. Lord, there is much hurt, both here in our community and in a wider world. We ask your healing presence. 
Lord, we are thankful too. We are thankful for a community of care. We are thankful for a place in which we can gather to worship. We are thankful for the progress that has been made that allows us to gather together, even as we pray that that will continue. Merciful God, we believe in you. We believe in your Son. We believe in the power of your Spirit. Help our unbelief as well. As we dream and as we vision and we wonder together, where are you calling us as Hickory Hills Presbyterian Church to move and to be and to do? Will you make it clear? Will you guide our steps and direct our hearts? Lord God, we ask for your blessing. We thank you for the gift of redemption, for the love that you shower upon us. We thank you for one another and for the others who have built upon our faith. We ask that you would continue to make us a people who are able to share your love with the wider world. Lord God, we pray all of this in the name of Jesus, who taught his disciples to pray. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our debts as we forgive our debtors. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, and the power, and the glory forever. We are going to sing together, Jesus Calls Us. It is number 720 if you have a hymnal. And if you so desire, please stand and sing out. gathering downstairs for a time of fellowship and then conversation. You are invited, encouraged, if I could compel you, I would, to join us for our time together. People of God, then go in peace. May the grace of our Lord Jesus Christ, the love of God, and the fellowship of the Holy Spirit be and abide with each of you now and forever. God's people say, amen. See?